Chapter 16 Monopolistic Competition Our objective in this chapter to answer the following questions. What market structures lie between perfect competition and monopoly and what are their characteristics? How do monopolistically competitive firms choose price and quantity? Do they earn profit? How does monopolistic competition affect society's welfare? And what are the social costs and benefits of advertising? By way of introduction, there are two streams of market models that we have studied. Perfect competition, the many farms, identical products. Monopoly, one farm. Now we're getting to deal with imperfect competition, which is in between these two extremes. One is oligopoly, and we'll deal with that in the next chapter. Only a few sellers offer similar or identical products. Monopolistic competition. Many farms sell similar but identical products. So, monopolistic competition. What are the characteristics of monopolistic competition? There are many sellers. There's product differentiation. No, they are not price takers. That They have a downward sloping demand curve. There is free entry and exit. And there is zero economic profit in the long run. What are some examples of monopolistic competition? Apartments, books, bottled water, clothing, fast food, nightclubs. This table looks at the comparisons of perfect competition, monopolistic competition, and monopoly. And monopolistic competition is right in the middle. So, the, we look at them by the number of sellers under perfect competition there are many many uh, sellers uh, under monopolistic competition there are many sellers under monopoly there is one seller what about the ease of entry and exit yes it is easy to come easy to go under perfect competition yes under monopolistic competition, no free entry and it's a blocked entry under monopoly. What about long run economic profit? Profit is contestable under perfect competition and under monopolistic competition. And because of free entry and exit, profit is paid down to zero under competition and under monopolistic competition. But because of blocked entry, profit can be positive under monopoly. The products farm sell are identical under perfect competition. They are differentiated under monopolistic competition. And there are no close substitutes in the case of a monopoly. Farms has market power, none under perfect competition. Remember, they are price takers. There is some power under monopolistic competition, and there is more power comparatively under monopoly. Uh, what about the demand curve facing the farm? Is horizontal under perfect competition, downward sloping under monopolistic competition, and downward sloping under monopoly. And yes, the demand for a monopoly farm is the market demand curve. Let's look at the short run equilibrium under monopolistic competition. Profit maximization in the short run for the monopolistically competitive farm. Uh, pro they produce the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Price is read off the demand curve, and price is greater than average total cost when there is profit. 
price is less than our total cost when the firm is making a loss, and it is similar to monopoly in that regard. This is a monopolistically competitive firm in the short run, that is a demand curve. It is downward sloping demand curve. And uh, if the demand curve is downward sloping, that means marginal revenue is below it. And that is why marginal revenue is uh, less than the price. And when you impose average total cost and uh, marginal cost, then you can establish the short run equilibrium. To maximize profit, farms produce Q at this Q point, marginal revenue equals marginal cost. You establish the price when you extend that line to demand curve and drop the perpendicular on the vertical axis. The farm uses the demand curve to read the price. To establish the profit, you establish this rectangle. That means if demand curve or the profit is above the average total cost, the firm is making a profit. And the area of this rectangle is the profit region. What about losses in the short run? If you see an average total cost above the price at the best level of output, that is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, that firm is making a profit. As you can see, for this firm, price is less than ATC. ATC is here, price is below. At the best level of output, that is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. The best this farm can do is to minimize losses. Remember, if the farm is not maximizing the profit, it will need to minimize the loss. And when the price, when the farm produces where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, that is the smallest possible loss this farm can make. In the long run, if monopolistically competitive farms are making profit in the short run, it will trigger entry. Remember, profit is contestable in a monopolistically competitive farm. New farms will have incentives to enter the market, and that entry in the market increases the number of products. This reduces demand faced by each farm. Demand curve shifts to the left price falls, each farm's profit declines to zero. Okay, the profit gravitates towards zero as other farms enter. If losses are uh, being made in the short run, it will trigger exit. Some farms exit the market, remaining farms enjoy higher demand and prices. So this is the graph of the monopolistically competitive farm in the long run. And uh, entry and exit occurs until price equals average, to average total cost. And as you can see, price is equal to average total cost. In other words, average total cost is tangent to the demand curve at the best level of output. That is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. You go to the demand curve and you find that at that point, average total cost is just tangent to the demand curve. And that is the best level of output. That means the profit is zero. Notice, however, that the firm charges a markup of price over marginal cost and does not produce at minimum average total cost, which means under monopolistically competitive farm, the farm is not producing at the most efficient level of output, which is the minimum point, the lowest point of average total cost, where marginal cost is crossing average total cost. So there is a markup, and we'll see why. Why monopolistic competition is less efficient than perfect competition? Monopolistic competition has excess capacity.
that is quantity is not at the minimum average total cost it is on the downward sloping portion of ATC as we just seen there's markup over marginal cost which means price charged is higher than marginal cost in a perfectly competitive farm or perfect competition, the quantity is at the average total cost, the most efficient level of production. The minimum level of ATC also where price equals marginal cost. So let's look at the welfare of society. Under monopolistically competitive markets, we do not have all the desirable welfare properties of perfectly competitive farm. So what are the sources of inefficiency? Markup of price of a marginal cost, that is a source. Price, uh, too much or too little entry, number of farms in the market. Product variety X, there is product variety externality, and there is business stealing externality. So let's look at markup pricing, where price is greater than marginal cost. Market quantity is less than socially efficient quantity. As you could see, we produce not at the lowest point on ATC. And that means there is a deadweight loss of monopoly pricing. What about product variety externality? Consumers get extra surplus from the introduction of new products. You got choices. The business stealing externality, losses incurred by existing farms when new farms enter the market to provide us with that variety and choices. Let's look at active learning, advertising. So far, we have studied three market structures, perfect competition, monopoly, and monopolistic competition. In each of these, would you expect to see farms spending money to advertise their products? Why or why not? Number two, is advertising good or bad from society's viewpoint? Try to think of at least one pro and con, and we're going to look at them a little later in the chapter. So let's talk about advertising. Incentive to advertise. When farms sell differentiated products and charge prices above marginal cost, advertise to attract more buyers. Advertise spending. Highly differentiated goods, 10 to 20% of revenue. Industrial products, there's little advertising. Homogeneous products, there is no advertising at all. There's no need for advertising if the product is homogeneous. In monopolistically competitive industries, product differentiation and marker pricing lead naturally to the use of advertising. The more differentiated the product, the more advertising firms buy. Economists disagree about the social value of advertising. Some think there is wasting of resources, some things there are some valuable purposes. So let's look at critique of advertising. Farms advertise to manipulate people's tastes. That's a critique. This psychological rather than informational creates a desire that otherwise might not exist. What about advertising impedes competition? Increase perception of product differentiation, foster brand loyalty, higher markups, makes buyers less concerned with price, differences among similar products, uh, critique of advertising. In defense of advertising, though, the it provides useful information to buyers. 
Informed buyers can more easily find and exploit price differences. Advertising promotes competition and reduce market power. Results of a prominent study. Eyeglasses were more expensive in states that prohibited advertising by eyeglass makers than in states that did not restrict such advertising. Advertising is a signal of quality. Little apparent information, real information offered a signal, a willingness to spend large amount of money. Signal about quality of the product. Content of advertising is really irrelevant. What about brand names? In many markets, brand name products coexist with generic ones. Brand names spend more on advertising and charge higher prices than generic substitutes. As with advertising, there is disagreement about the economics of brand names. Critiques of brand names. Products are not differentiated. Irrationality. Consumers are willing to pay more for brand names. Defenders of brand names. Consumers get information about the quality. Farms have an incentive to maintain high quality to protect the reputation of their brand names. Summary. A monopolistically competitive market has many farms, differentiated products, and free entry. Each farm in a monopolistically competitive market has excess capacity. It produces less than the quantity that minimizes average total cost. Each farm charges a price above marginal cost. Monopolistic competition does not have all of the desirable welfare properties of perfect competition. There is a deadweight loss caused by the markup of price over marginal cost. Also, the number of farms and thus variety, varieties can be too large or too small. There is no clear way for policymakers to improve the market outcomes. Product differentiation and market price and markup pricing lead to the use of advertising and brand names. Critiques of advertising and brand names argue that farms use them to reduce competition and take advantage of consumers' irrationality. Defenders argue that farms use them to inform consumers and to compete more vigorously on price and product quality.